Well, Amnesty International wants to ensure that any agreements and any discussions on the future of the internet and the governance of the internet keep human rights and particularly the rights to freedom of expression and right to privacy right at the very heart of the discussions. Um, what we're concerned about is that uh, human rights might get sidelined and that people will forget that freedom of expression and access to information is right at the very heart of what the internet is all about. Uh, so we're here to try and make sure that uh, people stay true to that initial vision, if you like, of the internet. Well, I guess governments will particularly want to pursue, possibly might want to pursue a security agenda. And we're, we're already seeing this in some countries. And Amnesty's documented various governments around the world repressing internet users, uh, denying access to sites, censoring searches, uh, in, in some cases actually locking up people for the peaceful expression of political opinions uh, on websites, in blogs, even just in the content of an email. Uh, and so we're concerned about that, uh, but also about companies as well. Uh, and what Amnesty International has also found and documented is that uh, major international internet firms uh, like Yahoo, Google, Microsoft have colluded with governments in the repression of internet users uh, by censoring searches, by taking down blogs at the behest of particularly the Chinese government, uh, and in the case of Yahoo, by actually providing information that was used to jail a journalist, Shi Tao, who's now doing 10 years hard labor. Well, I think it's, it's, it's very hard to answer that specifically because we haven't actually had any models of internet governance put before us for us to look at. But what we want to ensure is that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which enshrines people's human rights, is, plays a big part and is considered uh, in any consideration of models of internet governance. And after all, all, all of the models that are available, which I guess are international governance, national governance, and some form of governance by companies, there are dangers in all of these. All of these have... Uh, risks for human rights and so Amnesty International wants to ensure that, that human rights aren't eroded and that the, the fundamentals of the internet, that you can gain access to information, that you can say what you want within the limits of ordinary free speech uh, are preserved. Well, I think what we want to see is, is the, the full potential of the internet as a, as a force for human rights being realised. Uh, and it, is, uh, it does have huge potential as a force for human rights, whether that's sharing information, uh, being able to get news out of uh, countries which are uh, typically quite closed, people being able to use the internet as a, a, a space where they can talk where perhaps they might not be able to do. Um, we see this happening in a country like Vietnam where the online democracy movement is probably the greatest hope for, for human rights in Vietnam despite the government's attempts to close it down. Uh, and of course for Amnesty International as well, I mean, Amnesty is all about getting ordinary people to take action uh, to help the human rights of others. And the internet provides an amazing forum to do that. Um, we'll be presenting a petition of uh, 50,000 signatures uh, of people who've signed an online pledge for, for internet freedom. Uh, and and, and that just, it just in a very small period of time, in, in quite a small way really, shows the power of the internet to motivate and mobilise people. We issued a, a call to bloggers last week to try and get them talking about online freedoms and taking action on cases as well and publicising this. So the potential is enormous and I, I mean I don't think Amnesty International has fully realised the potential of it yet. Uh, but I think it can be a real force for human rights and we mustn't let that, uh, let that escape us. I think our greatest fear is that governments will be too afraid of the power of the internet and seek to shut it down and repress it. Uh, that in trying to pursue a security agenda, the, some of the, the things that make the internet so great and has made it such a success will be lost, such as free access to information and free expression. And I think that is a real, a, a great danger. And actually that would bring progress backwards several, several steps if, if these kind of, the things that make the internet what it is are, are restricted and destroyed. I think the one thing we would do is to look to the past, look to how the internet was founded, what it was all about, uh, and it was all about people being able to talk to each other. It was about people being able to get access to information from, from anywhere in the world. Uh, it's, it's what's made the internet such an enormous success and they mustn't lose sight of that. 
the other thing, of course, we would want is that fundamental human rights are always considered in all of the discussions. But it's sort of saying the same thing, that the internet is all about accessing information and it's all about being able to express yourself online. Uh, and we don't want governments or companies to stop that. Gosh, one word to describe the future impact of the internet. Uh, I, suppose I would p pick a boring word, communication. Fair enough. I should probably say activism. I think communication is much more likely. Yes, well, Kianush Sanjari is a, an Iranian human rights blogger who was arrested, uh, I think, the 7th of October. Um, and he was, he was taken and held initially in, a, in Communicado. Uh, I think now we, uh, we know that he's still not being denied access. He's still being denied access to lawyers and to his family. Uh, we think he's being held in Evin prison and he's at risk of torture. Uh, and he's a student activist and a human rights blogger and I've, I've had some of his site translated and he basically reports on human rights violations that are going on in Iran. Uh, we're very worried about him, obviously. He's being denied access to the rule of law. He's being denied access to lawyers, to his family. He's at severe risk of torture. And the chances are that he has been detained because of, of his, uh, his expressions of, of uh, political opinions uh, on the internet. So what Amnesty International is doing is, is trying to mobilize people to support him. Uh, we've issued an urgent action to our membership uh, calling on them to write to the Iranian authorities. We've issued a call to bloggers as well and to web users asking them to email the Iranian authorities and express their disgust at what they've done. Uh, and we're hoping that by publicizing his case we'll be able to shame the Iranian authorities into releasing him, or at least treating him fairly. Uh, if they suspect that he's committed a criminal offense then they should charge him with a criminal offense and give him a fair trial and then if he's innocent then they should release him. One of the other reasons Amnesty International is here is because we've been running a campaign called Irrepressible.info, uh, which is all about getting people to take action online for human rights. Uh, we'll be presenting a, a 50,000 signatures of people who've supported a pledge for internet freedom. But also on that site, people have been able to take action on individual cases, such as the Iranian blogger uh, Kinush Sanjari, but also cases in Tunisia, in Vietnam, and in China. Um, and also people are able to display their support by featuring a badge of censored material on their own website. So this comes from a, a database that we've collected of sites that are censored in various countries around the world. And people can show their support for irrepressible.info by putting some of this content on their website and broadcasting censored material and helping to defeat censorship. Um, so hopefully as well we're doing our bit uh, to try and help mobilise people to take action against internet repression. Thank you so much.